If you've been looking for a side hustle to make extra income this year, print on demand is still one of the best business models you could start. Not only is it super easy and really quick to get started, but the market is growing year after year and so many people are still looking to buy the types of items that print on demand sellers can make really easily. But with starting something new like this, there are so many things that print on demand sellers get really tripped up with at the beginning and so many mistakes that I see a ton of new sellers making. Now in this video, I'm going to share with you 10 of the things that I would I knew when I was getting started and I wish I could tell to all new print on demand sellers. Now some of these are probably things that you have never heard before so I definitely recommend sticking to the end because some of these mistakes and things that I wish I knew can be the difference between you creating a business that is making you a ton of income every single month and maybe just getting a couple sales here and there. So let's not waste any more time and just dive right into it. Now the first thing that I wish all new print on demand sellers knew is how important it is to invest in a research tool. Now, there are so many different research tools out there on the market, and I will share some of my favorites with you. But the thing is, a lot of new print on demand sellers waste a ton of time just scrolling through the first pages of bestsellers on Etsy, scrolling through tons of pages on Amazon, trying to decipher what things are selling well and if they can actually go after one of those niches and still be profitable. Now, with so many new items posted every single day and tons of sales being made, it's really hard to sift through all that information and not only be able to determine if this is a good niche that is selling well, but also a niche that has low enough competition that you could still compete in. So that is where a research tool is going to come in. Now, I say this all the time, but the research tool that is going to work the best for you is typically just the one that you are going to stick with and commit to using. But the ones that I definitely recommend and actually do have coupon codes for are both Merch Informer, which is a little bit more tailored to presenting you all of the information about what could be a really good seller on Amazon. And then I also recommend and use Sales Samurai, which is much more tailored towards Etsy sellers, and it's going to help you also with SEO and keywords. But honestly, either of those two, you could use for multiple different print-on-demand platforms because typically if something is selling well on Amazon, that similar type of product would sell well on Etsy and vice versa. But you can save yourself a ton of time and heartache by investing in some kind of research tool that is going to help take a lot of the guesswork out of pursuing niches that maybe just in the long one are way too competitive or they just don't have anybody buying them. Now the next thing I wish that all new print on demand sellers knew and I wish something that someone would have told me way earlier on in my print on demand journey is that you don't have to be afraid to venture outside of selling just t-shirts in your business. Now t-shirts are still my most profitable item. They're definitely the item that I sell the most in all of my print on demand shops. However, it took me a while to venture into some other different product types, but that can be super profitable. So I definitely left a lot of money on the table early on. Now I know it can be really intimidating to try to think about what other types of products to sell or how to format things to sell those or what products would be really good sellers. But a lot of times selling a alternative product besides just a t-shirt or a hoodie can really help you break into some competitive niches. Now the production partner that I work with to sell on Etsy is Printify and if you've never heard of Printify before they kind of act as a middleman between you and a bunch of different manufacturing partners. So the really cool thing about creating an account with them is that if you wanted to try out selling like mugs, journals, tote bags, candles, hoodies, t-shirts, really anything you can think of for selling on print on demand Printify already has a manufacturer on there that can likely help you sell that. So you don't have to create accounts with a ton of different manufacturing partners. You're just creating your one Printify account and then linking it with your Etsy store. And then you have access to try out a bunch of different products. Now, one thing that I don't recommend is I see a lot of new sellers try out maybe a couple new mugs and then they make a couple tote bags and they're making five t-shirts and maybe 10 hoodies. And so it's really easy to get distracted trying a ton of different products. But what I would recommend for new sellers is you pick maybe two to three different product types that you want to try and none of those have to be t-shirts and then you really just stick with those see how they do try to get over a hundred different listings for each of those product types and 
If one maybe isn't working for you, you could try something else. But typically sticking with a couple things instead of spreading yourself too thin is going to work to your advantage. And if you've never created an account on Printify before, I can't recommend them enough. They have incredible quality and some of the lowest prices out there. So I will link all their information down below in the description as well if you do want to create a free account with them. Now, the next thing that I really wish more new sellers knew is how important it is to not put all of your eggs in one basket. Now, this means a few different things in print on demand. The first way that I see a lot of people putting all their eggs in one basket and creating a really risky situation for themselves is they are going all in on one niche. Now, I think there is totally a time and place for having a niche specific store, but I've seen some people go really hyper specific with a particular niche, especially related to a trend that is here this year, but might be gone the next year. And so they create hundreds, if not thousands of products and designs in that one particular niche and they could be making really really good money every single month but then all of the sudden maybe next year that particular niche or trend isn't doing so well anymore. People aren't interested in it. They're not buying like they were. And so now their print on demand store that might have been built up to like six figures all of a sudden is making next to no income because people just aren't buying those things. So I think it's really important to diversify. Now, if you have a niche specific store, that is totally great. Just make sure you are pursuing a niche that is not a trend or related to something that is going to not be popular in a couple of years from now. Now, the other way I see a lot of people putting all their eggs in one basket that could create a little bit of a risky situation for them as well is by only going all in on one print on demand platform. Now, I totally get it. It's such a learning curve just doing this whole print on demand thing. There is so much to learn with each new platform you sell on. But what worries me is a lot of people have built up an incredible store on one platform and then if something happens to their account, say that they get one too many items that get rejected or they violate something they didn't know and they lose that account, all of a sudden their income is down to zero. So I really think it's a great idea to be diversifying the platforms you are posting on. Now there's a few different platforms I recommend. Etsy integrated with Printify, Amazon Merch, if you can get onto the platform, as well as Redbubble, TeePublic, and Zazzle. Now, some of those are going to be more profitable than others, but I think it's a great idea to be spreading out the places that you are posting designs so that if one thing happens to one stream of income for you, you have several other places that you also are bringing in some income every single month. Now, the next thing that I wish that so many new sellers knew is to stop trying to follow everybody else. Now, this kind of sounds funny because a lot of the whole game of print on demand is seeing what is working well for others and then using that to your advantage to sell products. And I still think that is a great philosophy, but I think some people have got a little bit caught up and are doing themselves a disservice by copying people too much. So what I mean by this is a lot of times someone sees a trending design or a trending phrase. And so what they do is they aren't making an exact copy of that phrase, but they are taking the exact thing that the shirt says and they are putting it in a very similar design in a similar style and posting their own version of almost exactly the same thing that is already doing well. Now, the reason that this is not a good idea is because that shirt is so similar to what you just created, but it's already been posted for way longer. It has reviews, it has sales. So nine times out of 10, when people are shopping for this particular phrase or item, they're going to go with the one that has been up much longer. So what you should be thinking about how you can do instead is anytime you see a trending phrase or a niche, think about how you can reinterpret that and bring something new to the table. So maybe the shirt that you saw that was trending and selling well that you want to make a version of was just white text on a black t-shirt. Now an immediate thing you could do is just sell that on a different color t-shirt. You could do a different type of font, a different design on that, or you could try something totally different and take that same niche but create a new phrase or really reinterpret what that shirt is trying to do. That way, if you are competing right against the shirt that you got inspired by, when someone is shopping, they're going to have two different things that they're looking at so that if they prefer your design or your phrase better, even if you don't have the reviews, you haven't been posted as long, they have a reason to actually click on yours and potentially buy it instead of just going, well, these look exactly the same. I'm going to go with the one with the reviews. So this is something that a lot of new sellers struggle with. Maybe they don't feel confident in knowing what is 
is going to do well or knowing how to design really great designs. So they just copy what is doing well. But one of the things that you should be learning early on is how you can take and reinterpret things to make them better and stand out amongst the competition. Now, one of the next things that I wish way more new sellers knew about and took advantage of is not being afraid to invest in a design service that either gives you templates or gives you ready to use graphics to use in your designs. Now, designing comes really naturally to a lot of people, but for some, it is such a big learning curve, not only to create good designs, but to know what sells well on apparel or print on demand products. So one of the things that I recommend tons of new sellers do is invest in a design suite that has some elements that you can use to really enhance your products. Now, again, there are tons of them out there and you really don't have to invest in all of them. You just need one good design suite and maybe a good subscription to a place that has graphics. So the one that I love, I recommend all the time, and I personally use it pretty much every day is going to be Kittle because they just have so many templates that you can simply just take the phrase that you want to design in, and then you're just going to change out a few words there, add in some of your own elements. But because they have ready to use templates, it's going to look like a professional, really well done design super easily. And this can be the difference between your items just getting scrolled past all the time and someone actually clicking on yours. Now, another way I use templates is exactly like what I talked about in the last tip that I gave. When you're trying to reinterpret something, you can see a phrase that's trending. You can take that exact phrase over to Kittle and scroll through their templates until you find one that's really unique and fits this and just put that phrase into there and you have a completely unique design that's going to be way different than what's already out there. Now, if you wanted something in addition to a design suite like Kittle that just took your products to the next level, gave you a few more things to use and experiment with, I also recommend Creative Fabrica, which is just a library of millions of different graphics, fonts, elements that you can use in your print on demand items. This is definitely one of the lowest cost subscriptions too. I think it's under $5 a month if you do pay for a year up front. And whenever you are making something that's a little bit more unique and you just can't find the perfect graphic for it, typically if I go over to Creative Fabrica, I can find something that's really going to fit the design that I'm making. I'll also link them down below too. Now, one of the next things that I wish a lot more new print on demand sellers thought about is that you don't have to be afraid to compete in competitive niches if you're willing to do the work to bring your own traffic. Now, what I mean by bringing your own traffic is utilizing something like social media to drive people actually to your store. Now, this is not going to be a strategy for everyone. It definitely involves a lot of work and sometimes that payoff you're not gonna see for a long time. But I wish a lot new print on demand sellers thought about maybe starting a Facebook page, an Instagram page, a Pinterest account where they are regularly posting the items that they are creating, posting mockups there and kind of generating a following that can then click back over to their store and potentially buy those items. Now, this is definitely going to work best if you have a very niche specific specific store where you have one kind of audience that you know is interested in your items. This is not going to work as well if you have just a general shop with tons of different niches so that it would be hard to really pinpoint the type of person you would want to follow this account. But this can be so valuable in the long run if you are able to kind of build up a following who is interested in your types of items and really create like a shop experience for people. Me personally, there are brands that I love that I follow their Instagram accounts. I follow them on Facebook. I love to see what new things they have. And you can do that same thing for your customers too. Now, it can definitely be slow growing something like this. And it might be a couple of years until you really have an engaged following that wants to buy every single new item that you post. But this is something that if you start early on, you can use that time to build up something that potentially could really pay off in the long run through that really engaged following. And then you can really compete in some more competitive niches. So for example, say you wanted to just go and sell nurse shirts. I would just tell you that that probably is not going to be a good idea. However, if you are really dedicated to creating a maybe Facebook page or an Instagram account that shares stuff about nurses, so maybe you have memes there, you have advice for nurses, and then you're going to sprinkle in some mock-ups and images of the fun nurse shirts that you're selling to direct traffic back to your Etsy account, that is a way that you could compete in that really competitive market, but also a really profitable one. So if you want to do something like that, think about how you can be bringing your own direct traffic. 
Now, one thing that I wish all new sellers paid attention to and really knew about before they got started is something that trips so many people up and leads to a lot of people actually losing their accounts or not being able to sell on certain platforms. And that is not understanding the rules of print on demand. Now, there are a few things that you really need to pay attention to as a seller on any platform, and that is going to be trademarks. So you need to make sure that every phrase, every keyword you're using is not owned by somebody else. So there's really easy ways to look this up. One is the trademark electronic search system, where you can search a database of all the trademarks that are registered in the United States. And another thing that people need to be aware of too is copyrights. So knowing that you can't borrow or take elements or inspiration from people who have spent many, many years and a ton of money building up their brand recognition, their logo recognition, or their just intellectual property. So one way that I see a lot of people getting tripped up by this is they're like, well, I want to create designs that are not explicitly Disney characters, but maybe they are referencing Disney characters or they're taking a little bit of inspiration from that. Anything that is kind of a derivative of a property that is really well known is typically not going to be safe and something I would recommend staying away from. But in additional thing that I know a lot of people don't pay a ton of attention to is the content policies of the platform they're selling on. So a lot of people are like, okay, I know that this is safe. I checked the trademark. Nobody owns this. I can sell it. But it goes against maybe Amazon's content policies. So there are so many things you wouldn't even think of that you can't sell on Amazon. One of the biggest ones that I think trips up a lot of people is that you can't sell any products that are related to a tragedy, which makes a ton of sense. We don't want to be profiting off of something like that but tons of people try to. So whatever platform you're selling on, just make sure you're taking the extra few minutes to read through that long content policy, just so you can make sure you're not going to get yourself in a bad situation down the road. Now, another thing I wish more sellers knew when they first got started is that a lot of times uploading more products is going to always win out over uploading just a few perfect products. So there are so many new sellers that spend a ton of time laboring over creating the most perfect design, making sure everything is optimized, checking and double checking and rechecking their SEO, making sure everything is perfect with their listing. But I think the person who is every single day uploading a decent amount of products is typically going to win over the person that has the most perfect listings, the best designs in the world, the most optimized SEO. So as a new seller, it's really important to figure out how you can get more products uploaded. Now, one of the things that I recommend is just picking a number of products that you want to aim to upload every single day. So this can be anywhere from like two products to maybe 10 products a day on the higher end. And then if you stick with that every single day, at the end of a few months, you're gonna have a pretty big catalog of products that you've uploaded just by slowly chipping away at that. And then definitely implement things that can save you time. One thing is definitely, like I mentioned before, using a manufacturing partner like Printify, who is already linked with all of those different production partners. And that once you make a design in there, you can easily just duplicate that and then change out a few things for a new listing. And I also have another full video on some really good time-saving hacks. I definitely recommend watching that too. But whatever you can do to get yourself in the routine of uploading every single day and just getting more uploads out without getting stuck on any of the parts of the process like research, design, and uploading is going to be huge in actually moving the needle in your business and making more sales. Now, one of the next things I wish I could tell way more print on demand sellers and even tell myself back at the beginning of my journey is don't be afraid to make things that you like to. Now, as a print on demand seller, a majority of your catalog of items might be things that you are not personally interested in, but you pinpointed a customer base that is really passionate about this particular product or niche. So you're going to capitalize on that even if you have no interest, but it's really easy to get caught up in just over and over doing your research, finding a niche that's going to do well, making a design that's tailored for that niche and uploading that and kind of taking a lot of the fun out of print on demand. So I really want to encourage new sellers that if you ever find yourself with a spark of an idea, something that you just want to make to get your creative juices flowing, I think you should definitely run with that. It's very easy to make this just a tedious business that you are just taking a lot of the joy out of it. But I think that's a huge mistake because I think a lot of the reasons why people get into print 
print on demand is because they see that it can be something really fun. It can be creative, something that they can use kind of as an outlet to share stuff that they love with the world. And that's really easy to lose that. So even for myself, I have to remind myself that not everything has to be only something that everybody else loves. If I have an idea, I run with that. And then sometimes those kind of things, they don't do super well. No one's really interested in them besides me, but I still had a ton of fun making that. But I have had experiences where I just thought of something, a design popped in my head, a certain phrase for a niche that I'm interested in, I thought of and I put it on a shirt or a sweatshirt and I listed it and then that has done super well. So you never know where your next best idea is going to come from. So I definitely recommend just if you have something that you want to create on a whim, follow that and keep print on demand being fun. Even years down the road as you're growing this business, try to focus on doing some of those things that you do really enjoy about this business model because in truth, it can be really, really fun. Now, if you're still just in the early stages of getting your print on demand business going, just a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to actually integrate and start an Etsy shop to sell print on demand products, I definitely recommend watching this video next that is going to walk you through that whole process and take a lot of the guesswork out of it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.